episode six, open mic. It, it has another song in it, <laughs> um, yeah. which to me is honestly one of the most romantic and touching moments, not just on your show, but like on any. I think I watched him sing that song like four or five times. We're of course talking about Simply the Best. Yes. Uh, at the store's open mic night. Yeah. Where did that idea come from? Why, why that song? Well, I knew. <laughs> Did you knew, know, know I knew the song. Sing? I knew he could sing. Okay. And I knew that he was a really talented musician, and I obviously wanted to write something for him in a romantic capacity, like, you know, because I knew that he could pull it off. I find it incredibly cringy, like, people singing generally, um, but I knew that he had such a confidence and a conviction to, his, to that side of his mm -hmm. sort of, like, artistry uh, that I wanted to use it, and... I think four seasons in, we had really been peeling back the layers enough to take the audience to this, these kinds of places. And I think each of our characters in the fourth season were experiencing emotional stakes that they had not been used to before, um, which was really fun. It was fun to get to this place where we feel like, okay, we've, we've earned the ability to ride that fine line between comedy and real human moments. And for David, for me, it was always like, where do you find the point? Because I think in any relationship, we can pinpoint a moment or two where things change, where you go from liking a person to loving a person, mm -hmm. and how do you articulate that and dramatize that? And um, I had always loved the Tina Turner song the best, and uh, I was always that person when it came on, that, like at a busy bar would be like, stop, <laughs> listen to the lyrics. They're so beautiful. Don't you understand what's happening and right now? <laughs> I thought, what a great pairing if we have him, if the setup is that he tells David he's gonna perform at this open mic night and David's sort of first impulse is like, this is so humiliating and this is gonna be a make or break point for their relationship. And it becomes this sort of pleasant surprise and, uh, and romantic sort of revelation. And uh, so I said to Noah, this is the song. It was scripted as, as you know, Patrick sings a, a, a surprisingly beautiful cover of Tina Turner's The Best. And um, we approached Noah and said, do you want us to figure out someone to come in and, and interpret the song or do you want to take it on yourself? And he said, let me try it. And uh, a couple weeks went by and then in the middle of the night I got this text message and it was him singing it at home. Uh, and was like, tell me what you think. And I put it on and was like, ha, 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 ha. At the time, like, as a single person receiving that, like, <laughs> that's not good for anybody, but like, for me to have just like, watched an episode of Downton Abbey and like, said goodnight to my dog and tucked myself into bed and then received that, it was like, this is both very sweet and so dark. Um, and I knew as soon as I heard it, because it didn't change at all, that what he had done with that song was extraordinary and that the scene, we had a scene because if we didn't have that song and he didn't do it the way that he had, I think that scene would not have had the kind of uh, weight that it did and the ability to change my character in the way that it did. Uh, and then of course it came time to shooting it and we just got to sit back and listen to him sing. And Catherine was so moved by it that she couldn't get through the episode, she couldn't get through the scene without crying and for us, it didn't really serve us well to have Moira cry. So we sort of had to like cut around it. Uh, well, what's funny is, I, I whatever, there's maybe watch it. Second, there's a second you where you see, see her wipe, you don't, you, and I was like, you never see her cry, but like, she's totally wiping a tear. Yeah. That is so funny. And at one point she sort of turns back to reach for a, a tissue, which was not part of this <laughs> scene, but it's a funny little, I mean, we, we you throw it in because I think sometimes it's nice to show the candidness of, mm -hmm. of, the, of television, but, um, it was a lovely moment. It was a moment that, for me, meant a lot because it was a parent supporting their kid. I think yeah, knowing her what moment was at going the end on, is also like what she does because we find out Jocelyn and, and Roland are having a baby. A boy, baby, yeah. And she's like, yeah. And they are trying to make her a big part of that. And yeah. she's like, I don't care. I yeah. want to focus on someone else other than me. Yeah, which was a, a big moment for her. And I think even the physical. At one point, she sort of reaches over and touches my arm as if to say, like, what's happening here? There's something really special happening. And I think. Um, for us to be able to project uh, a loving and supportive family in a moment when it counts mm -hmm. was really important. And to show that kind of physical support uh, of a parent supporting their queer child uh, in a really lovely and magical time in their life was, was a message that I wanted to like get out there. Um, 
and fortunately the scene was really easy to cut together. It's not hard to act like you're moved when that song is being sung to you. Um, and people really responded to it. It was a lovely, it was a lovely moment in the show. What is this? Consider this my olive branch. I call you, I need you, my heart's on fire. <laughs> uh, it was scripted that David sort of <laughs> lip syncs the song that Patrick had sung to him. <laughs> And again, scripting it, being like, isn't this hysterical? And then you get get, get it to the day and it's like, I don't, <laughs> I'm not I a dancer. Me? I'm not really a performer. I'm not a musician. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And we started to think, I, the night before, I was just learning the lyrics to the song because I realized I had to know it. Um, and we shot that scene right after lunch. And I requested a bottle of Prosecco uh, <laughs> to have over lunch. And Noah and I split the bottle. And we shot You're it. Talking like a full bottle. Oh like yeah, a yeah, split, yeah, full, a full bottle. bottle. It was okay. like multiple glasses. Okay. And we shot it right after lunch. And what you see is basically the majority of our first take. Uh, and I think as an actor, it was the most sort of unsafe I've ever felt, in the sense that like I'm gonna do something that's so outside of my own personal comfort zone. That level of sort of unabashed. Uh, just f lack of consideration for how people, how this is gonna look or how it's gonna appear on film. But you only get those moments so rarely, so I was like, ah, screw it, let's, tr let's try this. And, uh, and we finished the scene and, uh, and our director came out and he was crying. And I didn't quite understand because I had always pictured that moment to be quite funny. And the rest of our team behind the cameras were crying and I remember thinking like, I don't understand, I don't know what's going on. Do you think on. you had done it wrong? I thought I had done it wrong. And I think at times there are moments that come out of when you're making TV that are unexpected and I didn't, as I was performing it, and even when I wrote it, I don't think I knew what the context of the moment was and how uh, emotional it would be, I guess, for people who were invested in the storyline and, uh, and even once it aired, people were like, I was sobbing through your performance. <laughs> and me, looking at that performance, being like, I thought I was doing something funny. Um, I'm glad that it carried a, a deeper significance than it, than it did. And I think that's just the context of the, of the show. But um, yeah, it was, a, it was a very memorable time. And it was also scorching hot in the store. And I was wearing this wearing leather. Like a, yeah. yeah. Givenchy sweatshirt <laughs> that was lined in silk. This is like a list just, of problems you got yourself into. It was, like I was all I've of never these. been hotter, and I think part of what made that scene so unhinged was just the fact that I was like, a little tipsy, I'm gonna do whatever it sweaty. takes to just get this done in as little takes as possible. Um, but it was, it was very fun, <laughs> we had a good time.